everybody. How are you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter. And buckle up. Hang on to your seats. I have a show for you today. I'm out here in my shop all by myself with my drawings and um, where we held the first Honeydew Carpenter University and while I appreciate the solitude and the time to work and think, a week and a half ago this place was an exciting buzz of activity. What we accomplished over the past couple of weeks in creating these light and portable rocket mass heating systems. I couldn't have dreamed in a million years would turn out the way that it did. Mrs. Honeydew and I are feeling so completely blessed. Um, I wish I could say that I did it all by myself and I came up with the innovations and whatnot, but it was truly a team effort. Everybody got involved, everybody uh, went for it and there was just an excitement in the air. Uh, the first test burns are in. This exact stove is the one that uh, I test burn, and the results just far outweighed anything I could have ever expected in a million years with this thing. What we've essentially created, I put together a mixed design with some expanded lava rock and other things in it uh, to pour around the firebox and the last thing I would ever want to do is disillusion my audience and betray their trust. But I, 
when I, when I look at what we've done here, it's almost unbelievable. Um, you know how when you charge your cell phone, you plug it in, your fast charger for an hour, and then you use it for eight hours? That's essentially exactly what we've created. You put a little bundle of wood in here that fits in a 7x7 seven seven burn box and let it burn for 45 minutes to an hour. And eight hours later, you can barely touch this stove. It is still, it absorbs thousands and thousands of BTUs and it takes on that environment that it is inside and it changes back very slowly. It slowly releases that energy back into the room or whatever environment it's in. Uh, we test burned it on top of a mountain in Colorado. It got in the 50s, it got like 52 degrees at night and it was windy and it even sprinkled rain. Everybody who witnessed it is just amazed. And so today I'm gonna take you through um, a few things. We're going to go through the test results on the rocket mass heating system and some of those thermal images. Um, I am putting together an impromptu, it wasn't scheduled, but another workshop the 4th, 5th, and 6th of October. Um, I essentially want as many people as possible to experience uh, some of these things having to do with air creep. We literally burned this thing for an hour the night before. They all knew when I shut it down and we went to bed. And in the morning, I saw them poking around out there, touching it, you know, uh, uh, and, and just shaking their head. And I went out there and Harry's like, how does this work? It, it's... He said he had seen my video where I used aircrete in a bench as a thermal mask, but he just couldn't wrap his mind around it. And um, I thought that maybe I could improve on the mix, but I wasn't 100% sure. And so these results are just outweighing any expectation that I ever could have imagined uh, on this thing. The uh, upcoming event, the workshop that we're putting together, day one, we're going to build wall panels. So we're gonna build the frames, uh, prep them, and pour them, and pour a set of wall panels, and show people how to do that part of the process of building a shop or a building. Um, on day two, uh, I haven't put the final seal coat on the building that is behind Grandma and Grandpa's uh, shop. And so, um, Day two, we're going to all go over there and we're going to, uh, together, we're going to put the final seal coat on that shop and you're just going to see the beautiful cobblestone walkway up to the shop and how beautiful the building is um, where, where we put it. Now, I want as many people as possible to be able to see that building and, and experience building the exact same wall panels that we built for it um, because Grandma and Grandpa are actually moving to Texas and they're selling that property. And so this may be one of the last times ever anybody gets to experience um, that part and particularly being able to work on it. So, um, and then day three, um, I am installing the very first rocket mass heating system in a 2,000 square foot home in Julie's home. Uh, Julie with Dirt Patch Heaven, just an awesome blessing to Miss Honey do and I's life. Uh, she has a really great uh, homesteading channel. She has like 125 or 30,000 subscribers and she is just absolutely awesome. And so we're gonna put the first one in her house this next week and then during the workshop, everybody will get a chance to see a demonstration of it and how it works and see for themselves the thermal battery that we've created. And so, um, the last thing I would ever want to do is disillusion or betray the trust of my viewing audience. And, but it's out there. There's been enough people who have seen the test results on the first burns of the stove that um, 
it, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable to me. I, I don't know if I'd believe you if you told me that you could develop a material to put around a firebox and encase it in sheet metal and it would become a thermal battery and you could just burn it for an hour and charge it. Imagine if you could burn your wood stove, your conventional wood stove for an hour and it would just continue to give off heat the rest of the day. Well, that's what this thing does and it's absolutely incredible. And so, uh, I mean, imagine if you had electric baseboard heaters and you could just turn those electric baseboard heaters on for an hour and then turn them off and they would continue to emit heat for the next eight hours and they were that much more efficient than the normal electric base heaters. I mean, that would be incredible. That is what we have created here. It burns so clean and so efficient. It, we were burning the dirtiest shrub wood that we could find up there and within 60 seconds, within one minute, it was rocketing hard burning everything cleanly, there was no emissions. Um, in the morning after it had sat for eight or nine hours, I was able to stick my thumb inside the riser, take it apart, stick my thumb inside the riser and rub it on it and it was, just came out perfectly clean, zero creosote. Um, this makes the original one that I built for Julie um, seem like kindergarten. It worked well. And I, but I didn't use any special mix design or anything in the stove pipes or the heat riser or around the firebox. It was just straight air treat. It worked well, and it worked so well that it was able to overcome a two-foot downdraft. So the double wall stove pipe created such a draw that it created a negative pressure in the whole system. Um, standard rocket mass heating systems actually work on a positive pressure system where the stove, the heat riser rushing up there creates a positive pressure and pushes the uh, exhaust out. And many times it does not work uh, that well. Also, you have the benefit of there's about, I think, 16 pounds of sheet metal on this. There's about a 38 pound, almost 40, let's call it 40 pound firebox in it. And then about um, 22 pounds of um, air cream. And so the whole, this whole box right here, I lifted it up here and put it up here. It weighs about 75 pounds. Um, that, the test results on this are so good that it, that it's changing the game. It's changing everything. I don't even think you're gonna need a bench. We're gonna put thermal donuts filled with aircrete that you can layer however much you want to radiate out or however many batteries you want to put around the downdraft shroud that'll allow you to regulate whatever size of space you want to heat. And those thermal batteries will just absorb heat and then give it off for hours and hours. I don't even think you're going to need a bench. It's going to be a standalone um, item. It can be put on a second floor. It isn't like a standard rocket mass heating system where you have two tons of cob and, and you have the issues of possible leaking and CO2 in your home because um, of the positive pressure in it. There were so many people when I first started this journey and started uh, working on these ideas that really contributed to this. I look at um, the first book I ever read on it was from Erica and Ernie Wisner. And while I used a lot of those concepts, when I went to put them in the configuration that I wanted to use it in, which is a portable system, and they didn't quite work, I had to overcome those problems. And, but they were a huge, huge initial inspiration and help. And, uh, in their book, there was a guy from Germany that contributed to it. I'll have to get his name. I can't quite remember right now. Um, oh my gosh. Uh, William. Uh, I, I don't know if these people want their last names used, but I'll just call him William C. What um, an incredible guy. And 
both William and Gray couldn't believe the results on the test burn. It was just mind-blowing to them. Greg, uh, he's up from Canada, he said, when people figure out what this stove can do, this thing is going to go ape shit. And I don't mean to use foul language, but that's what he said. <laughs> he's a cool Canadian. But uh, every one of this crazy bunch of people that decided to invest in us and try and bring a project like this to life and came here. After the end of the five days, the five days not being optimal in my mind because I was in a vehicle accident and didn't have time to prepare exactly the way I wanted, they got to see everything go from flat pieces of sheet metal and from drawings on the wall, drawings like this one that show it all kind of going together and then the individual drawings and laying it out and cutting it and bending it from start to finish and they said they wouldn't have it any other way. In fact, every one of them is excited about coming back next year to the Honeydew Carpenter University and said they're planning on it without question. And so, Mrs. Honeydew and I are feeling so blessed right now.